Okay, we're going to talk about PRVC auto mode today. Um, when you go into the mode function of the servo, you'll get to all the available modes that you have available here. And auto mode is only available in pressure control auto mode and PRVC auto mode. But we're just going to talk about PRVC auto mode today because that's mostly what they're going to be using in CCU anyways. And we'll get to the PRV, we'll get to the pressure control auto mode later. So when you hit PRVC, you can see there's one, there's uh, SIMV PRVC, okay, and you see there's no auto mode tag available. That's because there's a pressure support here available, so that's telling you this can't possibly be an auto mode, so that's not available. The only way it's available is in the assist control modes. So PRVC assist control is here with an auto mode tab that tells you that it's an auto mode's available. Now, you have to hit it for it to be like this, it's, it's just now just in PRVC auto, or just in PRVC. If you hit the tab again, now it gives you these functions. Now it's PRVC auto mode. So how are we gonna order this and what is it gonna do? Well, first, these settings are the, if the patient doesn't breathe settings. If the patient stops breathing spontaneously, the vent's going to kick back into these settings. So you got your target tidal volume that's gonna be ordered. Um, and you know that's usually six to eight per kilo. Then you'll have an ordered rate of what they're gonna ventilate at if they're in that section. The ordered PEEP, the O2, the I time. You're gonna set the I time based on zero flow the same way you do in all the other modes. Your respiratory rise, same thing. Now we're at the trigger, same thing with the trigger. We want it to be as sensitive as possible without auto cycling. Obviously 10 is gonna auto cycle. So if we're putting this on the patient, we would start at your normal setting. Inspiratory cycle is 1% always unless you get that waveform or there's a big leak and you have to change it. Now this is the different part, the trigger timeout. What this is gonna do is this is telling the vent how long between breaths can the patient go before we're gonna think he's apneic or before we're gonna come out of the volume support and kick back into the backup settings. So this is, you, this is going to be patient size specific and it's gonna be ordered as well. You need an order for this, but if you wanna suggest it, it's gonna be patient specific. So obviously five seconds, if you put that on an adult, they're probably gonna be kicking back and forth all the time because they don't, you know, if they breathe in like 12 times a minute or 10 times a minute, they're not gonna take a breath every five seconds. An infant, typically in CCU, that's what we're seeing them one is about five seconds. So the older the patient, the longer you're gonna want that to be. So let's set this at five seconds right now for, for instant infant rates. Okay, now the rate here, what should we set this rate as? So what we want this rate to be is we need, if you're in auto mode, you need to know, get a good, pretty good feel about what the patient's minute volume needs to be for his gas to be okay. So you kind of have to know that first. So if you get him, if the patient has a minute volume of six and his pH is 740 and 40, you know that's what he kind of, needs to have that balanced pH, right? So you're gonna to wanna to set this volume at that eight per kilo, and then the rate, you're gonna want that rate to be something where those combination, his minute volume comes just shy of what he really needs for his gas. So if he needs a 6.0 minute volume for his gas to be balanced, you're gonna want this rate to give him something like a five and a half or a five. You don't want the rate so low that if he's in that mode, he's gonna be severely acidotic. But you don't want that rate so high as to, to where he doesn't need to breathe at all if he's in then, because if he does take a break and it kicks into that mode and he doesn't need to breathe, he just won't breathe. And then it won't, it won't be functioning the way it, it should. So you wanna set this rate somewhere in that close to his minute volume, just shy, so he'll have to take, he should have to take one or two spontaneous breath, breaths to meet it, okay? So what's gonna happen is when the patient takes a spontaneous breath in PRVC auto mode, it's going to go into um, volume support, all right? It's gonna ventilate him and volume support. So let's, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this test lung and I'm gonna put it set. I got that trigger at five and I'm gonna, this test lung shouldn't breathe, right? So it's not breathing spontaneously. So if it does, I'm gonna set this so it's not gonna, so it won't auto cycle, okay? So right now it's set at a flow trigger at one. So the, the test lung's not going to auto cycle or the vent's not gonna think it, it's breathing spontaneously when it's not. So right now you look at the waveforms, you see 
that I'm breathing at a rate of 30 that I had dialed in and I'm in PRVC, so I'm pressure ventilating and targeting the 115 cc tidal volume I have dialed in on the inspiratory limb of the vent. And the vent is going to now adjust the pressure so that 115 is given on the inspiratory limb. And you can see by the waveform that my eye time is too long because I got a hold at one second, but let's leave it there because he's not fighting, he's not pushing his pressure up. So I got a hold and you see there's no little pink spikes at all in the waveform indicating there's no spontaneous effort noted by the vent, right? So he is now in PRVC mode, auto mode. He's not doing anything spontaneously. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this so that the, the vent auto cycles and I'm gonna simulate the patient's taking a breath spontaneously. So I'm gonna auto cycle now. See, I got a pink spike. So now this patient in reality, in real life, it's a real patient, started to take breath spontaneously. So now what's happened is I am in volume support now. I'm kicked over away from the rate of 30 and I'm basically in CPAP pressure support, but I'm the vent is going to increase the pressure support pressure until the 115 cc's is given on the inspiratory limb and in volume support. And it's gonna continue to let the patient control his own rate unless the patient doesn't take a breath over a five second course. And if he should not take a breath in a five second course, I'll show you. So I'm gonna put this back to where it's not auto cycling and see what happens. So now the patient decided for whatever reason doesn't breathe. You can see it's waiting five seconds and happens and now it's kicked back into PRVC with the rate that you have dialed in. No pink spikes and now the eye time is much longer. So the difference between when he's in the PRVC with the rate of 30 versus when he's spontaneously breathing and he's in the, vol the volume support part of this auto mode, the pressure is the same, the volume will be the same, 115 before and after, 15 of pressure before and after, but the eye time has now changed because in volume support, it's gonna function just like pressure support functions. The eye time is controlled by the flow slowing down and it keeps, it holds the pressure till the flow slows down to this setting of 1% of the peak flow and that changes the eye time. But you can see the volume to the test lung hasn't changed at all. The peak pressure to the test lung hasn't changed at all. The only thing that has now changed is the amount of time the volume was given over, okay? So that's how volume support functions. That's what auto mode, PRVC auto mode is. It's PRVC with that rate backup if they go apneic, volume support when the patient is triggering any breaths at all. And really what we'll probably see more than not is when, it, when the patient goes back into the rate where he stops breathing, it's gonna be more, it's probably going to be a sedation issue where somebody gets over sedated and knocks their respiratory drive out while they're in this mode. And because of that, they stop breathing and they went into the backup rate. Um, and what we're gonna look at is we're gonna find, if we're gonna look at how many times that's happened and can we, can we coincide those with a certain amount of sedation meds given at a certain time so we can adjust the sedation so, so, to see if that's truly needed or not. Okay, next will be just volume support.